There can be only one. What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. I am so excited that you're here today because we're talking about the topic that has the entire drone world abuzz, the release of the DJI Air 2S. Everybody is excited about this thing. It just dropped a couple days ago, and there are a few points that I wanted to cover with you as it relates to the release of the DJI Air 2S. First off, my position has changed as it relates to the Air series of DJI drones. I also wanna talk about the real conversation and argument that needs to be had as to whether or not the DJI Air 2S has made the Mavic 2 Pro obsolete. And finally, DJI and its name of its most recent drones has sort of set a precedent and a pattern that I'd like to address and that I have some speculation to share with you on. But first things first, let's talk about my position change. In the past, I have made it known in my videos where I talk about the Air series of drones that I don't feel they're a full prosumer professional quality drone. I think that they fall somewhere between an entry level drone and a prosumer level drone, and they just don't pack enough punch to be considered a professional piece of aerial imaging equipment, but they're more advanced than that entry level drone like the Mini or the Mini 2. So now that the Air 2S has come out, my position has completely changed on that. I think that the Air 2S has elevated the Air series into a professional quality drone. We're gonna be talking about some of the specs here in just a few minutes when we compare it to the Mavic 2 Pro, but just trust me when I say, the specs that the DJI Air 2S packs means that it is now a reliable piece of aerial imaging equipment that you can use on professional jobs. I just wanted to get that out there. I wanted to make it very, very clear that I no longer am going to talk down on the Air as an underperforming, mediocre, pro drone, it has now entered the conversation with the likes of the Mavic 2 Pro, the Phantom 4 version 2, the Autel Evo 2. It doesn't have to just be a DJI drone it competes with. It competes with just about every other prosumer drone on the market. But that brings us to our next point. Does it make the Mavic 2 Pro obsolete? For the past few years, the Mavic 2 Pro has been the king of the prosumer drone category. Its portability, its specs, everything about it puts it atop the pile as it relates to prosumer drones that pack a professional quality in the images that it puts out. But has it been dethroned? Well, we're gonna take a look right now, and just like any other comparison video I've done, we're gonna need a whiteboard. Okay, so as per usual in these comparison videos, I have a table here with three columns. We've got spec categories in the first column, followed by Mavic 2 Pro specs, and finally the newcomer, the Air 2S specs. These spec categories largely define whether or not a prosumer drone can be considered a piece of professional aerial imaging equipment. Now, we already know that the Mavic 2 Pro and the Air 2S are defined as professional pieces of aerial imaging equipment. That's not the question here. The question is, how do they stack up against each other. So let's go ahead and start with the first category, which is camera. Now the Mavic 2 Pro, we all know, has a very impressive camera. It's a one inch sensor in that Hasselblad camera with a 28 millimeter focal length, and it's got an adjustable aperture between F2.8 and F11. The Air 2S got a big upgrade from the Air 2. It has a one inch sensor as opposed to the, its predecessor's camera, which was a half inch CMOS sensor. The Air 2S also has a 22 millimeter focal length, which is really good for those nice nice wide landscape shots, but it does not have an adjustable aperture. This is just wide open and there's nothing you can do to change the settings remotely, which means that the Air 2S does not come out on top in the camera category. This one goes to the king of the castle, the Mavic 2 Pro. Let's move on to our next category, which is max video resolution. The Mavic 2 Pro has 4K at 30 frames per second as its max video resolution. It was really solid, top of the line when it came out, but since then, max video resolution specs have changed drastically. The game has been stepped up and the Air 2S comes in strong in this category. A max video resolution of 5.4K at 30 frames per second, and it got a big step up in the 4K department. You can now shoot at 4K and 60 
60 frames per second in the Air 2S, which is going to make for some really nice, silky smooth slow-mo at 4K resolution. This one's a clear-cut win for the Air 2S over the Mavic 2 Pro. Next up is max video bitrate. Mavic 2 Pro has 100 megabits per second. You can already guess what's going to happen here. Because of that increased video resolution, that 5.4K resolution, the Air 2S is going to have to have a lot more horsepower when it comes to processing video. So it's got a max video bitrate of 150 megabits per second. Air 2S, again, taking this category, no contest at all. The next category is max photo resolution. This one is a dead tie. The Mavic 2 Pro has a max photo resolution of 20 megapixels, as well as the Air 2S coming in at 20 megapixels. Next one is video transmission system. The Mavic 2 Pro has OcuSync 2.0 with a dual antenna and a range of 10 kilometers at 1080p for the video preview. Very, very good specs there. But again, the Air 2S came in big with an upgrade in the video specs as well as the transmission. Overall, Air 2S takes a big step up with the OcuSync 3.0, a more reliable connection, and four antennas in its system. It also has a range of 12 kilometers at 1080p video resolution. Solution. The Air 2S takes this category easily with the big upgrade to OcuSync 3.0. Total flight time, an exact tie, 31 minutes from each aircraft. But remember, this is an ideal condition. So the Mavic 2 Pro and the Air 2S, it'll vary flight to flight. But overall, you can expect to get anywhere between 26 and maybe 28 minutes in an average flight from these drones. The core intelligent flight functions is the next category. Mavic 2 Pro has A-Pass, Hyperlapse, Spotlight, Active Track 2.0 and point of interest 2.0. We're not going to get into detail about what these flight modes are, these functions are, but we are going to talk about how they stack up against the Air 2S, which again runs away with this category. Air 2S added master shots as well as an upgrade to A-Pass 4.0. It still has hyperlapse. It's got spotlight 2.0, active track 4.0, and point of interest 3.0. So while it got a bunch of upgrades, it also received that additional core intelligent flight function. Air 2S again takes this category very very easily with those upgrades over top of the Mavic 2 Pro. And we've come to our final category for the specs of these two drones, the obstacle avoidance system. The Mavic 2 Pro has forward, backward, upward, downward, and side to side sensors for obstacle avoidance. The Air 2S falls a little bit short. It's got forward, backward, upward, and downward, but it lacks those side-to-side -side sensors, which means that you do have blind spots and areas of vulnerability when you're flying without those sensors. Remember, never rely on those sensors solely, but just keep in mind that they do serve a purpose and they do help a lot when it comes to flying and maybe not seeing everything around your drone 100% of the time. They can be a real lifesaver. So for that reason, the Mavic 2 Pro takes this category with those side-to-side -side obstacles avoidance sensors. Now, you can see on the scorecard here, the Air 2S won on paper four points to two. However, does this mean that the Air 2S has officially dethroned the Mavic 2 Pro and made it obsolete? Overall, I say no. Yes, the Air 2S is a very impressive piece of aerial imaging equipment, but overall, I still think the Mavic 2 Pro at least deserves part of the mantle at the top of the prosumer food chain. You can call it bias, you can call it haterade, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I'm just trying to be honest with you about what I think about the comparison between the Air 2S and the Mavic 2 Pro. There is no doubt the Air 2S has inserted itself in the conversation as a serious piece of professional aerial imaging equipment. That 5.4K video resolution at 30 frames per second is going to be crisp and buttery smooth. There is no arguing that it is to be taken seriously and that it offers quite a bit when it comes to professional aerial imaging. That video resolution is going to be awesome. However, the Mavic 2 Pro still reigns supreme in that camera flexibility and the versatility that it has. I've been on dozens of professional shoots and even more just leisure shoots. And I can't tell you how many times I've launched a drone that didn't have an adjustable aperture and realized the ND filter that I have on there isn't going to suit the conditions that I'm flying in. So I have to bring it back, land it, turn the drone off, take the lens off, swap it out with the new ND filter. It's a pain, it's a hassle. And honestly, when you're talking about flying a drone for money, commercially, professionally, time 
is money. You charge for your time more often than not. So when you have to bring a drone back just to change the equipment out and you can't just do it from your remote, it makes things a little bit unprofessional, especially if your client is standing right there and watching you struggle to get the settings just how you need them to be to get the image that you want. It just makes you look sort of bad. Now, that's not a huge dilemma. You can work around that and everybody makes mistakes and most people are sympathetic to that. But when you're able to make those changes, make those adjustments and change the settings on the camera remotely without having to bring it back and waste all the time of changing the equipment out, it does wonders for your shoot as far as time efficiency goes and experimenting with looks. You can change the camera settings in a way for the same shot over and over and over again and get the perfect picture or the perfect video clip out of it just by taking the time to change those settings and doing that shot over and over and over again with different camera settings each time. The flexibility in that adjustable aperture gives the Mavic 2 Pro the ability to get the perfect shot every single time. There's no drone on the market in the prosumer category that can match that versatility, that flexibility, and that efficiency. So for the time being, I would say that the Mavic 2 Pro is not obsolete. However, it is now sharing its seat at the top of the pile with the Air 2S. There is no question about it. The Mavic 2 Pro, while not obsolete, is on borrowed time. And it feels weird to say that because for the past few years, the Mavic 2 Pro has been the standard. And now all of a sudden, we're looking at change and we haven't experienced change in so long in a market that changes so much, the top of the food chain has not seen any tangible change for years. So now to be talking about it again, makes me feel really strange. Like I don't know what we're getting into. I don't know what territory we're about to explore as drone enthusiasts, but change is coming. And the Air 2S is a strong indicator of that. I haven't felt this excited about the upgrades coming to a drone since the Autel Evo 2 came out. And that one for all intents and purposes was a little bit of a flop anyway. So the fact that the Air 2S has come out so strong and has really threatened the status of the Mavic 2 Pro in a real way really makes me excited about what's to come for the Mavic 3 and other drones that we're waiting for from DJI. But that segues nicely into our final point of this video. For years, people have been circulating rumors that DJI was going to get rid of its Phantom and Inspire series of drones. They've said that the builds are too archaic, they're too bulky, they're not practical, they're not efficient, it's not easy to transport. All of those things being largely true. They are a little bit of a dated build when you look at how big and bulky they are. Yeah, the Inspire series does have transportation mode where it flattens out, but it still takes up such a big footprint that it's not very logistically feasible to transport it anywhere you wanna go, meaning taking it up on a hike or taking it into smaller areas, whatever the case may be. They do have some problems when it comes to logistical feasibility as on-the-go drone solutions. Mavics do that very very well. They've solved that problem with the folding body. I've also noticed that they've dropped the name Mavic from their last two drone releases. You had the Mini 2 and the Air 2S. Keep in mind, the versions of those two drones before that were the Mavic Air and the Mavic Mini, respectively. So the fact that they've dropped the Mavic moniker from that tells me that DJI may very well be realigning how it's distributing its drones and the families of drones that it supports. In the past, I always said, mm, no, there's no way. The Inspire series has its own dedicated use. The Phantom series has its strengths and the Mavic series has its strengths. They're not going to do away with the Phantom and the Inspire. I still sort of stand in that camp. I don't see how it's practical for them to do away with the Phantom and especially not the Inspire as that is their budget level professional cinema drone. And by a budget, I mean, yeah, $10,000 isn't cheap. That's one of their package prices. But in terms of that or a Matrice, which is $30,000, you're obviously gonna be able to afford the Inspire a lot more easily. But now that they're starting to realign their drone series and they're perhaps branching the Air and the Mini off from the Mavic and they'll no longer be associated in the same way anymore, I'm starting to believe there may be some truth in them phasing out how often they put out Phantom and Inspire drones. I think that if they were going to cut any of their drone lines, the Phantom may be the one to go. And I've never said that before and I've never believed that because I thought that's their flagship drone. That's the one that got them to where they are now. Everybody knows what the Phantom looks like. Everybody loves the Phantom for the most part. Why would they do away with it? But really, when you look at it, the Phantom would be the easiest one to just do away with 
and inject these new styles of drones, these mini and these air drones, in its place. Rather, the Mavic series would actually take the place of the Phantom as the bigger prosumer level drone, but it would still have the portability and the functionality of the smaller versions that have branched off from it. Again, don't take any of this as fact, it's pure speculation. All I'm doing is sitting back and observing the things that are happening and trying to form my own opinions on them. I'm not trying to spread this as absolute, this is what's going to happen with DJI, because if I did that with every video, I'd get bitten quite a bit. No, all I'm saying is, it is interesting that these rumors have been circulating, and now all of a sudden DJI is realigning its drone families. Now the Air and the Mini seem to no longer be a part of the Mavic family. They sort of branch out into their own series of drones that I think is just gonna be standalone from now on. They may have been based on the Mavic format, but I think it's going to be Mavic, I think it's going to be Air, and I think it's going to be Mini moving forward based purely upon the fact that they are slowly dropping that Mavic branding off of these drones. Now, the real telltale is gonna be when the Mavic 3 comes out. Will they call it the Mavic 3 or will it be the DJI 3 Pro? If they call it the DJI 3 Pro, all bets are off and I'm gonna go ahead and say it and be as bold to say is they're no longer going to be producing Phantoms and they probably will look at reducing how many times they have a new release of the Inspire drone. Besides, they're at the top of the food chain when it comes to the Inspire. They're just cannibalizing themselves every time they come out with a new iteration of the Inspire drone. But what do you think? Leave a comment down below telling me what you think about the Mavic 2 Pro versus the Air 2S, as well as what you think about DJI repositioning itself within the drone market by dropping that Mavic moniker off of the Mini and the Air series of drones. If you really liked this video, hit that thumbs up button down below. It helps me out tremendously. And if you find yourself really enjoying YouTube drone content, consider subscribing to my channel. I do all things drones in the name of drones, whether it's highlight videos, history lessons, drone news, drone rumor, or speculation. I do it all here, and I really appreciate it if you did take the time to hit that subscribe button and follow my journey as we continue to make our way through this ever-evolving world of drones. If you've already hit the subscribe button, consider sharing this video with a friend, sharing my channel with a friend, especially if they also love drones. Until next time, guys, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here.